Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Matt Schultz. He is the Chief Industry Analyst at CompareCards.com by Lending Tree. We're going to take a look at consumer revolving credit, and it can only go so high without there being any consequences. Matt, it's great to have you with us in studio. I'm really passionate about financial literacy and having our audience understand um, the benefits and the consequences of their personal finances. Revolving credit up an annualized rate of 14% in December. Yeah, it, wow. was, it, was a, it was a really big jump. And it may seem like December would be one of those months where you would see a big bump with holiday spending. But traditionally, if you look at the numbers going backwards, it really hasn't been. So seeing that big of a jump is, is kind of concerning considering we've already got Mount Everest. Of, of credit card debt out there anyway. Yeah, well, and, and that's just a fraction of, I think, overall consumer debt in America is 14 trillion, but U.S. revolving debt's up to 1.1 trillion. That's an all-time record in counting. Yes, yeah, we have we have blown past the, uh, the pre-recession record, and it's basically just been hockey stick growth for the last several years, and it's not slowing down anytime soon. You know, it could be argued that the debt increase, it could be a sign of confidence, but you can only keep growing without any consequences. You can even liken it to the stock market. How many more all-time highs can we continue to hit before we have to pay the piper and think about our federal balance sheet as well as our own personal balance sheet? Yeah, I mean, so something has to give. And, and truly, we don't know what that mountaintop is as to where we start seeing delinquencies increase. But the truth is that even if delinquencies aren't increasing, it doesn't mean that people aren't still really struggling because if you have $1.1 trillion in credit card debt, you just have, there, there are certainly people out there who are really struggling, even if they're paying their bills on time, that debt mountain is still growing for them. Yeah, because you really can't keep up with the interest either. And you figure you have your $1.1 sure. trillion in that, lots of young people in that category, then you have $4 trillion in student loan debt or whatever that number is. Um, What's your best advice for, for young people or even um, older people that are going into retirement to, to manage this cycle that just seems unstoppable? Yeah, really, really the thing you need to do is take some sort of action. And the, the good news is that there are things that you can do. I had $10,000 in credit card debt when I was 24. I know what it's like mm -hmm. to be drowning in this. And now one of the things that you can do is you can call your credit card issuer and ask them to lower your interest rate. We've done a survey at Compare Cards and asked people if they've done that, and about 80% of people who did that were successful doing it, and they knocked their uh, APRs down five or six percentage points, and that's really significant. But the problem is hardly anyone ever asks. I would never have thought to ask that myself. I figured, you know, you sign sure. the contract, you have to, um, get in there and, and pay your bills so it doesn't impact your credit score, because once your credit score is impacted, you really can't move on with anything else major in your life. Right. Um, does it impact your credit score if you ask to have your interest rate lower? No, it, it generally shouldn't. There, there may be a chance that there would be a hard inquiry against your credit, and that could ding you a little bit in the same way that if you apply for a credit card, there's a small temporary ding against your credit, but the truth is that ding would be so small and it would be completely outweighed by what you would save from that reduced APR. So when you go to consolidation, uh, these agencies that help you consolidate your credit and so forth, uh, is, is that the right thing to do for a consumer? Will that impact you at all? It can be. You just really need to be careful about who you work with in that space because the truth is that a lot of the things that those sort of agencies do are things that you can do by yourself. I mean, we've all got to-do lists that are 100 miles long, and it's nice to have somebody on your side to help you kind of guide your way through it, but it's one of those kind of buyer beware sort of things that if something doesn't seem quite right with who you're talking to, know that you can do some of that stuff yourself, including something like a personal loan that you could get to uh, consolidate some of your credit card debt. That's something that a lot of people have done recently. It's a booming space. Right, well, it also comes down to accountability as well. Okay, we have to be very aware of that, that if you do get these loans consolidated, it doesn't mean you have more credit on your cards to go and spend again, or if you are able to consolidate, li live up to those obligations as best as you can. Yeah, that, that's really the whole thing. Um, if, you, if you just see that open available credit as a reason to go spend more, then you're just, you know, you're digging your hole deeper. It's one of those things where when I, when I talk to people about how to tackle debt, 
One of the things that I talk about often also is a 0% balance transfer credit card. And people sometimes think that it feels counterintuitive to get a new credit card to tackle credit card debt. And as long as you use it wisely, as long as you're disciplined and accountable to yourself, like you were saying, those cards can save you a ton of money by knocking down your APR to zero for a year, 18 months, whatever the case might be. All right, Matt, great insight. Thanks so much for joining us. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino.